Ooh, ah, Silverberg. Ooh, ah, Silverberg. Ooh, ah, Silverberg. Goodbye, Silverberg. You're locked on Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade, and this episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. So I've been hosting this podcast for the last five seasons, since 2019, and I was going to have only one episode to finish off the week, maybe two, because there is a game later tonight, which I will not be covering because I will be doing public address for the Firebirds game on Friday. And I'm a little sad because this breaking news came out, and this this is pretty big news. This is by far... The, not the biggest takeaway, but the biggest story. And that is that Jakob Silverberg is officially going to be retiring from the National Hockey League after this season, which means he only has three more games left. Tonight's game against the Calgary Flames, tomorrow's game against the Los Angeles Kings, and next Thursday's game at Vegas. And that'll be it. So Jakob Silverberg will be done after 12 seasons. Jakob Silverberg is 33 years old, from Jävla, Sweden, home of Jävlebakken, which is the goat that gets burned down every year. If you haven't seen this before, look it up. It's it's kind of hilarious, actually, that the Jävla goat gets burned down every year. But anyway, beside the point. So Jakob Silverberg is one of the many Swedes that played with the Ducks over the years. He was there with his buddy Hampus Lindholm. And he was even there when Isaac Lundestrom first came into the Ducks. And um, I did like the quote from Isaac Lundestrom that, you know, he came into the Ducks organization when he was 18 years old. And Yaka was one of the first guys that talked to him. Of course, they didn't have that language barrier because they both spoke Swedish. So having Sylphie there to kind of ease Isaac Lundestrom into the team and into the league. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. So that's something that I kind of liked as far as that quote is concerned. But anyway, so Silverberg in 12 seasons, as of this recording, has accumulated 168 goals and 373 points. In 11 seasons with the Anaheim Ducks, he scored 158 points and 354, sorry, 158 goals, 354 points. I I can count, folks. His first season... He got started with the Ottawa Senators, hence the Sens jersey. And he got drafted by them. He got his start with the Sens and then quickly went off to Anaheim where he started a pretty solid 11-year career. And yes, I I did the chance. I haven't done the chance, by the way, in in a long time. I'll admit um, I didn't really do much of the chant the last four seasons because he had just had injury after injury after injury. He had the blood clot in his leg. He had the hip replacement. I mean, those two alone, that can that can end a career, those two things alone. But he persevered. He stuck with the recovery. And it was a lot for him to even get back into plane shape, let alone play again, play another four seasons after the, 20, the shortened 2020 season. Yeah, it's been four years of just injuries and you know is he going to be effective and it it has been a little bit sad that um age has gotten to him but also just injuries have gotten to him in general and of course when you get older injuries take a lot longer to recover from Um, like i just mentioned he had the blood clots in his leg um the hip surgery which a lot of players do not come back from that hip surgery um kessler kessler had hip surgery and he was never the same in fact he didn't even come back so yeah those kind of injuries can happen can hamper a career big time and you know what 
Silverberg for a while. He just was in the lineup. He was healthy, and you could count on him. And I would even say you can count on him up into the 2019-2020 season, which I'll admit that was the last time that I did that chant. Yeah, I haven't done the chant on Locked on Ducks since we've been on YouTube. And I'll admit it's it's been a while since I've done the Ua Silverberg. I think the last time I actually did it in a game that I was at was in 20 no 2020 when he scored against the I think it, no it was against the Senators. That's right. It was against the Senators the day before everything shut down because Silverberg scored like really early in the game and I heard like four or five people do the Ua Silverberg. I'm like, okay, I'll join along. So Ua Silverberg. And then like a minute after that, Nick Delorier got still the most unlikely hat trick in Ducks history. <laughs> still a record, by the way, fastest hat trick in Ducks history, Nick Delorier. But even the start of that season, like Jakob Silverberg got off to a hot start in that 2019-2020 season, which was my first full season covering the Ducks on Locked On Podcast Network. And I was at the Ponda a lot that season, and I heard the chance. And yeah, he, he got to a hot start. In fact, Jakob Silverberg is a one-time All-Star. Yeah, Silfi was an All-Star in 2020. And I know I'm kind of going all over the place, and it's kind of hard to try to organize my thoughts. A, because I got to sleep pretty soon because Firebird's game. And also... It, it's still kind of like little pieces here and there are coming back with the last few years that I've done this podcast. And I remember when he got selected to the All-Star game in 2020, that was his first All-Star elect selection. And I thought, you know what? Good for him. Like that is someone that is deserving. He had just gotten a new contract, which at the time, at the time of the contract signing, I thought it was worth it. And that first season of that contract, he he made it worth it. I mean, I had no problem with it at the time. But he didn't play in that All-Star game. Um, for those of you that don't remember, Jakob Silverberg wasn't an All-Star, but he didn't play in the All-Star game. He didn't even attend because he was there for the birth of his child all the way back in February of 2020. So... You know, he's got a family. I think he's got two kids right now because there was one, there's one four-year-old and one that is six years old. So for Silverberg to retire now, he gets to spend the rest of his time with his family. He gets to see his kids grow up. And I think that's important. And I think that's good for him to at least leave on his own terms instead of, you know, being forced out or you know, struggling to find a contract in the National Hockey League because Sylphie has struggled mightily this season at times. And I heard some Ducks fans saying like, no, we don't want him anymore. Like, yeah, some Ducks fans were kind of just bashing him. I'm like, no, nah, like I kind of want to see him back because, you know, Sylphie is an alternate captain. And I was one of those that said, I wouldn't mind seeing him come back for like a veteran minimum for like maybe a million for a season or two. That way there's like more of a transition for future captain, alternate captain, etc. So I was kind of hoping that he'd be back for another season because I still kind of like him, but not happening. So once again, Jakob Silverberg retiring after 12 seasons in the National Hockey League. And I'll actually talk more about Jakob Silverberg after the first intermission. Stay locked in. And now a brief word... From Policy Genius. All right. So life insurance is an important safety net for your family. And you got to find the right policy. And it can be time consuming. It can be overwhelming. But Policy Genius is the country's number one insurance marketplace. And it is convenient. It is time saving. It helps you compare your options from top companies. And their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you through it. Policy Genius also gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL 
or click the link on the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Welcome back to episode number 863 of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez as we are talking about Ua Silverberg. That's right. Uh, Jakob Silverberg, once again, is retiring from the National Hockey League after this season, which means only a small handful of games left. And in fact, his final game will be Friday, April 12th. That is tonight at the Ponda, and I know there's going to be a lot of fans there for the final game, and I hope those of you that are listening, if you're listening on your way to the arena, I hope you all cheer for Silverberg. I hope you give him, you know, the applause that he deserves. I mean, he's had some great moments in an Anaheim Ducks uniform, and he will be, he will be missed. He will. So I hope to hear over the TV, like once I watch it later in the night, I hope I get to hear some ooh, uh, Silverberg chants. All right. <laughs> yeah, it takes me back to a time in 2020 when we were only doing audio episodes. And I kind of like just did a quick scroll of like episodes from that first season of Locked on Anaheim Ducks. And there was a couple of goals that I had just like remembered that kind of triggered my memory. One of them was the goal against Ottawa because it was his old team. And the other one, I kind of forgot about this one, but one of my favorite Jakob Silverberg goals back in 2020 was against the Vancouver Canucks. And this is a shorthanded goal, by the way, which also Silverberg, kind of a specialist when it came on the penalty kill. In fact, um, Jakob Silverberg, when I looked this up, he had 12 shorthanded goals in his career, 11 with the Anaheim Ducks. That's not bad, 11 shorthanded goals. And he was kind of just a special teams specialist. And I think we kind of took him for granted a little bit because, yeah, he was always on the PK or always on the power play. And we took it for granted. But the one in 2020, that one, that was a fun one because that was against the Vancouver Canucks. This was back, I got to get the date correct on this so I could make sure. This was, yeah, live research, folks. Um, as my puppy is staring at me. Wow. So we're going back to November of 2019 against the Vancouver Canucks. So the date, yeah, was kind of hard, hard to remember, but the goal itself, I remember because it was shorthanded along with Ricard Raquel and he was like trying to get a handle on that puck and Raquel just kind of tapped it away. And then Silverberg took the puck away from JT Miller and then just whizzed right by Quinn Hughes. And he just straight up embarrassed them. And he kind of did like a slick like forehand backhand move and just like put it in shorthanded. And that was one of the more fun goals that season. That was probably one of the most fun games that season. And the reason I remember that when I looked back, because I always look back on certain episodes from time to time and have good memories. And the reason that game is in my memory is because that was Dia de los Muertos night in Anaheim in 2019. And I think that that game kind of has a bit of a special place in my heart because, you know, Silverberg's shorthanded goal. And then Ryan Getzloff's game-winning goal in overtime. Yes, that was the origin of Ryan Getzloff, El Capitan. And that yes, I still do the El Capitan call, but in a different capacity now than I used to. But Ryan Getzloff's El Capitan goal wouldn't have happened if not for Silverberg's just sick shorthanded goal on Dia de los Muertos night 2019. See, I, I knew I remembered it for a reason. And like, this all comes back to me because this was, God, four years ago or five years ago now. Ooh, boy. Yeah, fun times. We're, we're going to miss Sylphie. Part of me hopes that he wears a C for the last game, just for the sake of wearing a C on the last game. I think it'd be cool. But, you know, I understand if they wouldn't. And that's fine, too. All right. 
Uh, just a few more odds and ends. So I talked about that 2020 season. That was his only All-Star appearance. That was the year the Ducks were not represented in the All-Star game because Silverberg um, witnessed the birth of his child. So I didn't really cover the All-Star game that year at all. But Silphy is an important piece in Ducks history. Top 10 in goals. Now I know some fans were a little bit critical because he was making five and a quarter this season, but you can't blame that on him. Like the first season of that contract, yeah, that was a good signing. That was a good contract deal. He was an all-star. I would have said, yeah, the five million per season is justified for an all-star. And I was very okay with that deal at the time. Injuries injuries happen. Devastating injuries like that, it's it's unfortunate. That's really what it is. So that's been the last few years of Silverberg. But I think, when I think of Silverberg, I think back to like the goal against the Vancouver Canucks. I think back to the goal against the Edmonton Oilers in 2017. I think about the game-winning goal. I think about the one that began the comeback on Catella. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You you guys know. The comeback on Catella, 2017. For those of you that are new fans or those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, this was during this series against the Edmonton Oilers when the Ducks were down 3 nothing, And then all of a sudden, you just had this miraculous comeback that just was one for the ages. Completely one for the ages in Game 5. And I still can't believe that the Ducks came back from that that game five because they were they were kind of dead they were and I take it back Silverberg didn't score the goal but he got the assist on that first goal from Getzloff and then got another assist so he got two assists um the one I'm thinking of is actually game four the game winner in Edmonton that's what I'm thinking of see I get it mixed up because it's been so long so game four was the game winner game five was where he got things started with a couple of of assists to Getzloff and Cam Fowler. And then it just went completely BS crazy after that. Fun times, folks. And in fact, I'm thinking of game three, where Silverberg had a very important goal towards the end of the game against the Oilers and sealed that victory in game three. So that's what I was thinking of. And this was when the Ducks, like, they were down in that series. Like, I think we forget. The Ducks were down 0-2 in that series in 2017. And both of those losses were at home. So that's partially what I think of. I think of Silverberg starting to spur that comeback. You know, he scored two goals in Game 3. He got things going in that series. If it wasn't for that spark plug in game three the ducks i don't know if they win that game three they would probably have wound up being down oh three and probably would have lost that series we probably wouldn't have had to come back on catella so that's what i think of i also think of jakob silverberg back in 2015 i think about those times when he was just lethal with the puck along with ricard raquel and ricard raquel And Silverberg, they made a very good duo on special teams especially. Oftentimes you would see Raquel from Silverberg or Silverberg from Raquel. And they they just worked very, very well together and kind of had a sixth sense when it came to scoring effective goals. And they were still scoring very effective goals all the way up to 2020. They were still going at it. So that's what I'll remember. And I'll even remember that 2015 run. Yes, I know it ended poorly. And yes, I know they lost in Game 7 at home to the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, the Game 7 losses at home. We won't talk about that. But we'll talk about the good. Because Silverberg was kind of on one in that 2015 postseason. And yeah, um, he scored 18 points in 16 games that postseason. So he averaged over a point a game in that 2015 playoff and was excellent 2017 almost a point a game he was excellent there too that's 
what I'm going to remember about Jakob Silverberg. Not so much the last couple of seasons where he struggled, but those good times. Those really good times. And I hope Ducks fans will go into tonight's game and just kind of think back and say, you know what? He was good. He was a very good Anaheim Duck. And he will be missed. And one final thought. I love the fact that Silverberg, pun intended, kind of took young Leo Carlson under his wing. Yes, that was intended. Because, you know, he had another young Swede coming into the league. Especially a number two pick. And, yeah. Leo Carlson, for all intents and purposes, is one of those guys that, you know, came in with a lot of pressure, another young Swede to Anaheim. And from, like, reports that I read somewhere, like, Silverberg told him where to go, where to eat, um, helped with that language barrier, and helped ease him into the Ducks and the National Hockey League in general. And actually, that's what I love about, like, guys like Silverberg, guys like Troy Terry, you know, guys that will help out the young ones coming into the league. So let's try to remember Jakob Silverberg for all of that, for the goals, for the shorties, for being a great mentor to guys like Lundestrom and Carlson, two more Swedes. All right, we're going to head very quickly into the second intermission. And I do have one other thing I want to talk about that isn't Jakob Silverberg, but I'll talk about that on the other side. Now, a brief word from Indeed, and Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. Candidates you invite through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. With Indeed matching, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates and bam, it's hiring at warp speed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to begin hiring and begin hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per app. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. We're also brought to you by Factor Meals. And eat stress-free this sp- this spring, this off-season, I can talk, folks, with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to eat in a couple of minutes. They have calorie-smart, keto, protein, plus vegan and veggie. I hope I can talk tonight, folks. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals. Factor is your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. Head to Factor Meals right now. Factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 for half off your first meal and 20% off your next meal. Once again, code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get half off your first meal and 20% off your next meal while your subscription is active. Welcome back to locked on Silverberg, part of TLOPN or Tilopin. Yeah, I hope I can talk for this Firebirds game. Oh boy. But I'm going to leave this all in because don't don't have any time. And also, um, I just want to continue like one final thought on Silverberg before I get to the other thing I want to talk about. Yes, he's been hindered with injuries, but I think we also have to remember that it took a lot of guts to come back from those kind of major injuries. And he kind of like proved everyone that, yeah, he still has a little bit left in the tank. I wouldn't be surprised if he scores a goal in his final home game against the Flames. I mean, yeah, we would see Ryan Getzloff. He scored in his final home game. I would love it if Silverberg this season scored a point in his final home game with the Ducks. That'd be really cool. And yes, I am going to miss those 
chance up in the upper uppers. Yeah, those were super fun times. And also, um, I didn't mention this, so I have to mention this now. Um, just last year, um, he, I think he was up for an award. And I'm like remembering correctly. Like, I know I'm remembering this correctly because I talked about this last year. And yeah, that's what it was. Um, Silverberg was a um, winner for the Bill Masterton Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. He was the Ducks nominee last season. And that's the player that has the best qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. So once again, he'll be missed. All right, um, I'm almost out of time, but I did want to mention this. I was going to have a few minutes on this, but I'm not. So this will be a brief mention. Sam Colangelo signed his ELC. He signed his entry-level contract with the Anaheim Ducks. He will make his debut tonight in Anaheim. So how about that? Sam Colangelo's first game in the National Hockey League and Silverberg's final game in Anaheim. Um, no offense to Sam Colangelo, but I don't think he's going to get that rookie lap in Anaheim that first game. I think this is going to be all about Silverberg. No offense, Sam. Like, Sam Colangelo has had a great, great start in San Diego. I got to see Sam Colangelo's first game in San Diego, for what it's worth. And he had a nice little welcome there. But I don't think it's going to be the same thing in Anaheim because it's going to be all about Silverberg. And I don't mean to overshadow the ELC signing, but I think this is a big deal for the Ducks because Sam Colangelo... Um, could have gone elsewhere. And Sam Colangelo, you know, could have been a free agent and just said, you know what, like, I'm good. But, you know, he stuck with it. He stuck in college. And he did well in college this season. Got off to a good start with San Diego. And we'll see what he does in his couple of games with the Anaheim Ducks. So we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Hashtag let the kids play. All right. That's going to do it for this podcast. Uh, We will be back with another episode, I'm going to guess, very late Friday or early Saturday because there is a game tonight against the Flames, final home game of the season. Um, I'll be in Coachella Valley, so I'll talk about that there. But in the meantime, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, ad-free on Amazon, also on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button there. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. You could follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD and the show's Twitter's at LO underscore Ducks. Once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so appreciated. And let's give Silverberg one more loud cheer tonight, Friday night. For Locked On Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to be safe out there. Be kind to one another, and Ducks and Silverberg fly together.